Welcome, uh, everyone. I'm Rick Richards. I'm an analyst here with Parsons TKO. Um, if you haven't been to one of these before, uh, just a, a quick intro uh, from, from our end. We're a strategic consulting firm with a diverse team of digital transformation experts, and we're very passionate about collaboratively creating change uh, with you from within your organizations. Above all, we want to make sure that you and your teams are getting the most from your critical investments in, in all the systems and platforms uh, that you use um, and spend time maintaining and spend uh, money maintaining and um, uh, and trying to drive that change throughout your organization, uh, making better data-driven decisions. Uh, today, we want to talk specifically about one platform, uh, which is Universal Analytics and the upcoming change to GA4 um, Google Analytics 4. Uh, we'll chat a little bit about that in just a moment, but before I do, I'm going to do a quick introduction uh, for our panelists here today. I'm joined by Marty Shell and Justin Wayman. Um, Marty, do you want to go first and just do a quick introduction uh, for yourself? Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Marty Shell from the Urban Land Institute, ULI. I'm a director of digital marketing there. Um, basically, take care of the 100 plus websites at ULI and also manage the analytics for our company. I've um, been on Google Analytics for about 13 years and have just started the transition in the last couple of months to GA4. Justin? Hey, everybody. Uh, Justin Wayman. Uh, I'm Senior Digital Product Manager at Share Strength. We're a national organization dedicated to ending hunger and its root causes. We're most well known for our No Could Hungry campaign. Um, I, Marty's got me beat. Uh, I've only, we've only, only got about 50 websites that we oversee here. Um, uh, but, uh, they're very diverse and all have different, uh, analytics and data requirements. Uh, so, uh, excited to talk about the GA4 transition for us and, and how it's worked. Yeah. Um, and thank you so much to both of you for joining us today. Um, I, I think there's a, a lot you can share uh, that will be very enlightening and hopefully helpful to our participants today, um, whether it's whether they're managing one website or 150, um, there are challenges um, and opportunities with Google Analytics 4 uh, making the move off of Universal Analytics. So um, let me just take a moment uh, in case uh, in case you're saying, wait, what is what's happening with GA4? What is uh, what is Universal Analytics? Is is my is someone moving my cheese? Uh, the answer is yes. Google is moving your cheese uh, on July 1st of this year. Um, this will bring an official end to Google Universal Analytics, which is probably just what you've called Google Analytics. Um, and it has been going. It will have been going for I think 10 years, more than 10 years at that point. Um, this is the standard really for freely available website performance metrics. So pretty much anyone and everyone had this running, even if they had some other analytics uh, running um, alongside it. Uh, GA4 is going to replace it and, and is in the process of replacing it. Um, it's been running for several years now, but it changes um, sometimes on a daily or weekly basis. And it's very much still in flux, as you'll probably hear from Justin and Marty, um, as their teams have already started uh, using it a little bit. Uh, but so all of that means, uh, you know, this is where we get our stormy seas metaphor. Uh, this is not a, uh, a calm um, move uh, to a new version of, universe, uh, of yeah, of Google Analytics. Um, it's very much uh, some really rough and choppy waters and as we have been saying now for several months, uh, you must act now if you want to avoid data loss and reporting discrepancies that could confuse and dis derail your teams, your board, and your constituents. Uh, and this is just to give you a quick sense of, you know, some of that, some of that change. Uh, universal analytics op uh, organized around properties and views. Um, there's a multitude of default reports that are available and ready to go when you kind of dive into the platform. GA4, on the other hand. Um, there's one property, there's no views. Um, if you change anything, it's altered across the board for everyone at your organization. So very dangerous uh, to just go in and start applying filters. Um, there's minimal default reports at this time. I'm, I'm sure that Google will be adding those in the years to come, but uh, as of right now, you're, you've are you got to know everything yourself. And uh, you see one of the highlights here, data's more locked in, but shorter lived. Um, so it's a little bit harder to get out. And also it doesn't stay around as long in the system. 
Uh, and then we've got, uh, there's less reliance on customizations. There's maybe some new features there uh, in GA4 already ready out of the box. Um, but in order to get the most value out of it and do a lot of your kind of external reporting, if you use Data Studio, you might know, um, have some familiarity there. Google's big query, is, which is a separate product and has uh, and is very much not free um, for the most part, uh, is now pretty much required. We used to say it's almost required, and now uh, I think we can say it just it just is. It is required if you want to get any additional data out of the system and do any sort of uh, anything beyond just some some default reporting uh, within GA4. Um, so. What impact are we thinking uh, in terms of metrics? There's going to be new metrics. Um, they're going to be calculated differently if they did stick around. Um, strategies might have to change because of that. Conversations internally might have to change because of that. Knowledge um, is going to be a huge one. Uh, before, if you hired a person and they worked with analytics before, they probably had worked with Google Analytics. Um, that's not the case anymore with GA4. It's still very new. There's still very limited knowledge about it, especially as changes keep rolling out. Um, it almost becomes a full-time or part-time job just to keep up with all of the changes that Google is making. Um, budget is going to have to change because you're going to have to have room for training people to use that platform since the knowledge isn't already built in. Um, building out the reports, um, and especially any reports that you've used before that use custom data, um, and even exporting the data is going to require a lot more a lot more work and uh, and possibly budget for data storage. Uh, and performance is also a big one that we'll we'll chat a, a little bit about today uh, because it's very difficult to compare to past impact um, of your work uh, when all of the data vanishes uh, six months after July 1st. Uh, Google is a little cagey right now, actually. Uh, they, um, their website says, you'll definitely get six months, but we haven't decided on a date yet. So, uh, you know, we'd like to tell people to prepare for the worst and um, just kind of get as much ready and off of that platform by July 1st as possible. Um, now, the way Parson TKO sees possibilities is that, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of challenges here, but also a lot of opportunities uh, because the platform, GA4, uh, is only one piece of a, a much larger puzzle. Um, it's going to change your data. Um, this is, you know, an update to Google Analytics at, at, at the minimum, but really it's so much more. It's a paradigm shift that's going to affect how your teams work with and access that data, what data they're going to have available, um, and it'll it'll affect your strategy, your digital strategy, uh, your engagement strategy across all of your teams. Um, and it's it's really a great opportunity to start talking uh, at a broader data strategy um, level. So uh, with that in mind, I want to turn to our panelists and uh, and let them speak. So you know, first and foremost, um, Justin, can you let us know how the migration has been going for you? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so our, as I mentioned, our organization uh, is, uh, we've got a, a large number of websites and web products that uh, are managed by different teams with different goals, different audiences. Um, so uh, as we were told that we were gonna need to make the change from, from Universal to GA4, um, we immediately got, a group of stakeholders together to talk about uh, what data is important, what what this is going to mean for them. Um, I did a one of the automatic conversions in Google's back end where you know just upgrade this property to GA4 with one of our properties and very quickly realized that I was going to need some expert help. Uh, and so luckily we had an ongoing relationship with the folks at Parsons uh, and uh, it was a smooth transition into the conversation of, okay, what does this mean for us? Um, and as that has gone on over the last, I'd say, five or six months, um, we've had lots of conversations uh, with our internal stakeholders, just getting to know what type of data is important to them. What are they going to want to see moving forward? If they've got reports that they want to maintain, how do we make sure that those get carried over? If not, how do we custom create reports so that it's something that's simple for our stakeholders to use? Um, so uh, we're nearing the end of the, the development phase and we're about to sort of get into the, the training elements and areas. Uh, it's been tricky from the standpoint of the stakeholders are very diverse and, and want different things. So making sure that the right fit 
is in place for each of those uh, different groups requires a lot of time and, and, and effort, um, mainly on the Parson side uh, in this engagement for us, but also just internally making sure that everybody's um, aware of what's going on and, and so that when that switch does flip in July, uh, you know, we'll, everybody will be prepared for it. Um, so it's, I would say it's been, it, it hasn't been a smooth process, uh, not for any of our own reasons, or, you know, just because of the, the force change and, and Google sort of, as Rick alluded to being a little wishy-washy on, on what GA4 is going to be. Um, but I think as we come in for a landing, uh, we're really excited to get trained up on GA4, making sure that everybody on our team is empowered to uh, pull reports, set up custom tracking on their own. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we're excited, a uh, little, little cautiously optimistic about it, but um, we're ending up in a good place and, and we're asking the right questions, I think. Excellent, thank you. And yeah, you touched on a little bit this aspect of, of kind of technical debt coming up in conversations where um, I think folks are starting to realize, you know, oh, well, wait, am I, is that going away? Am I not going to have access to that? Or we had this all this time. I didn't even know it was there. Um, how do, how do I see it before it goes away? Um, so Marty, I wanted to ask you also about how the migration has been going uh, on your end. I think uh, a little bit further along in terms of some of your teams are already using uh, GA4 and starting to get used to the data that way. Yeah. Um, we. Um, I, like Justin, I had uh, transitioned over to GA4, I think about uh, eight months before Google announced that they were shutting down Universal um, Analytics. It wasn't a full um, you know, build out of GA4. We didn't have any of our custom dimensions in there, but um, it was at least enough to start looking at things. Um, as we've gone on and made changes. It's been exciting to have access to those uh, more advanced reports, like the uh, the funnel report and the uh, pathing reports that are a little more advanced in G4. Um, so it's um, been an opportunity to give my teams access to those um, and take advantage of them. Um, that, that's where we leaned in on that. And then as far as um, how the transition has been going, it, it was a uh, surprise to everybody in March uh, back um, last year when they announced. Um, definitely not something we were planning for. And it gave the company sort of a pause of um, where do we want to go? I, uh, while I had moved over to GA4, there was no commitment to it at that point as far as an organization had gone. We were comfortable with the data we were collecting and wanted to make sure that we looked at the whole landscape of what was available out there before we decided that GA4 was where most likely everyone was gonna stay and be. So we wanted to be where all the um, knowledge base was gonna grow over the years. And we figured GA4 was where most people would stay. It led to our decision to go. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to note a couple of folks have mentioned, Marty, they're having a little trouble hearing you. Um, does seem like your mic cut out a little bit. If uh, okay. you can either move closer or talk a little louder, uh, that would be sure. good. Because uh, you're saying some really important things, uh, uh, in particular that um, you know, getting teams into this data now and getting them used to the the very big shifts now um, is is crucial uh, for when there's a sudden drop um, on July 1st and Universal Analytics isn't there. If you have questions or you have you see discrepancies uh now is the time to uh, start understanding those and especially you know if there's any marketing campaigns if there's any outreach campaigns that you're trying to measure through the summer if you start in june it's probably recommended that you start with ga4 or with a, a, another new platform that's uh what's going to come out because uh, otherwise you're going to have a sudden massive shift in your metrics and it's not going to be obvious if that's an issue or if it's just a difference in how the platforms are uh, collecting data. Um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, chat a little bit more about, you know, some of those challenges um, that you all are, that you all are finding. And um, Justin, do you, uh, can you talk a little about the, the challenges you're experiencing in during this migration? Yeah, I think the challenges that that we've 
faced had mostly been um, internal and and uh, figuring out the needs of of a large group of people looking for different things. So I think um, by being forced to, into this change, it's given us an opportunity to bring a lot of different people to the table internally um, to either open their eyes about what is possible from data or to allow them to express their frustrations about what we haven't been able to get so far. Um, so I, I think it's been, you know, I say it's a challenge and, and that's mainly just an effort standpoint, getting lots of different people together and synthesizing all that information. But I think it's ultimately been a net positive for the organization because we do have um, large numbers of people who hadn't thought about web data before and, and what it can do for them. Um, I think that sort of a challenge for me personally has been communicating out, um, you know, new nomenclature and and what the GA4, the new environment's going to be like, just without any, without having been into the the fully set up uh, environment that we're creating yet. Um, it it was a little difficult for me to communicate outwards. Um, so I would say, you know, to anybody who's going through this, to make sure that you're opening up lines of communication between either your 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 vendor experts who are helping helping you or um, making sure that there are multiple people in conversations and and you're asking questions about what does this term mean what what will what will this metric look like in the new GA4 how can we get at this data that isn't served to us by default anymore um, you know to reassure people that they're still going to be able to get the the metrics they're looking for so I think the challenges were were more communications and strategy based internally um built around you know the the obvious challenges that come in with learning new technology and, and nomenclatures yeah the, i i think we're, we're seeing that um almost across the board really um that this is you know and i think i said it earlier too um this is so, so much more than just a new version of google analytics it's really uh changing everything to the level where these conversations have to change and a lot of assumptions that maybe got built up over years of different data collection, different views, different ways of slicing and dicing the data have to be uh, almost completely reexamined uh, because Google is just kind of pulling the rug out from everyone uh, with this change. Um, and Marty, I wanted to ask you in particular, because uh, I know uh, one of the challenges that you have been looking at with your team is uh, the notion of data retention. Um, and actually, one of uh, one of the um, uh, attendees here has asked a question about why Google um, moved to uh, to GA four, and I think that is in, in large part um, because Universal Analytics was um, data kind of lasted forever. Uh, I think you caught one thing where they tried to take some of that data away from Universal Analytics. Um, but uh, one of the, the big things we're seeing with GA4 is it's much more restricted in terms of how long data lasts. You do have to export it and possibly even pay to export it via BigQuery uh, if you want to save it, um, because uh, Google is still being sued um, <laughs> over and over again in uh, throughout Europe because of GDPR violations. Um, and they're trying desperately to say, like, how can we collect data that's useful to you, but also not hold on to it long enough where we're responsible for monitoring it and storing it and, you know, uh, dealing with all those laws. Uh, so a lot of the changes and um, and even the, the move to GA4 uh, entirely was um, was fueled by those privacy concerns. Uh, can you speak to some of the challenges you've you faced and what you've overcome with data retention at ULA? And you're, sorry, you're muted. Is that better? Can everybody hear That's me? That's great. Now? Yeah, uh, thank you. Took the headphones off. Uh, the, uh, we've been collecting data since before Universal Analytics. So we have had a huge uh, amount of data collected over time and how that has been a concern of the team is what do we do with this now that um, it's all about to go away. Um, there had been a, um, a small effort before this was all starting to start to move data out of Google Analytics, out of Google's um, infrastructure and into our own um, databases uh, that we could access and merge in with our uh, AMS system. And this sort of just um, 
jet, shot jet fuel, fuel into that uh, process. We've uh, um, definitely bought into the whole idea of let's figure out the way to get the data out through some connectors and and get it into BigQuery, get it into um, our um, database that we're going to be holding and start to build reports on our own in our own system um, while still take, um, taking advantage of Google Analytics um, baked in reports inside their system and try to maintain some of our data studio reports or looker studio reports as well. It's uh, been a quite a challenge to figure out what we take with us and what we sort of let go because there's just so many years of data. Um, what, how do we prioritize that? And then also look at um, what can be reasonably compared to what's going to be uh, coming along with GA4. Um, there's some things that we could probably grab from the old system, but would we have would have no comparable metric, and then do GA4. So is it worth bringing over and continuing to report on that if we can't do any real comparison or have anything that would we would use in the new system? Yeah. Uh, and and Justin, I wanted to ask you because you you'd mentioned before to me that. Um, you started leaning on uh, vendors more heavily to sort of um, pull these reports and start generating uh, insights and, and generating findings uh, so that that's a method of, of, you know, rather than storing all the data and then having to dive into that, um, having, you know, here's a 2020 analysis, here's a 2021 analysis um, to, to look back to, and that being a way to kind of archive and preserve data. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, we're... <laughs> knowing that uh that the data is going to go away and and recognizing how much we make our decisions based on um previous years or or seasons um uh digital efforts um we rely on that to determine whether or not we're going to spend you know a, a large amount of money on a digital investment um, we need to know whether or not it's worked in the past for, um, you know, we're mainly a fundraising organization. So um, to us, the most important thing is to provide uh, environments where uh, potential donors can, it, can decide, you know, they want to support us and then very easily go ahead and do that. Um, we've relied on data both through um, just looking at that historical data, but also, you know, A-B testing that relies on the data that it's being fed, uh, being truthful and accurate. Um, so with with that historical sort of look back mentality in mind, we're just, uh, I'm, I'm just taking as much data as possible, running um, reports for various websites uh, and just storing them in folders on, on a Google Drive. Um, and then also just tracking, we've got a couple spreadsheets where we track data month over month, just so that we are prepared with a, an abundance of data for when it goes away, um, so that we can look back. Uh, something that I am interested to see how, you know, if, if knowing that there were some issues with the way that university analytic, analytics was, was counting some, some metrics, interested to see, you know, if, as we look at the new data coming in, that's you know, that's replicating that those previous uh, uh, metric pools. Is do we see a decline in, in the numbers? You know, it, it, or what is and then is that can we assume that those are the the real numbers? You know, so I think we're still sort of figuring out what that next environment is going to look like and and how we report out on the success or failures of the initiatives we begin on, but we're not going to be able to do any of that if we don't have all that data stored somewhere. So that's been a large part of, of me and my team over the last three months while the Parsons team has been leading some uh, discovery sessions and, and workshops with our teams. We've been figuring out the best way of, you know, archiving data from diverse sites and not just, you know, here's visitors and time on page and bounce rate and all that stuff. It, it, it's a lot of it is very specific to those those teams. So rather than just pulling the the high level numbers, digging a little bit deeper to make sure that you know you're you're aware of who the top refers and 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 sources were for previous uh, for the previous uh, uh, Google trackers, how that relates moving. So we have it moving forward. So I think just 
just an abundance of preparation and, and thinking about what we're going to want to have a year from now that, you know, we, we may lose once, the, once the transitions. Yeah. And, um, and I, I see a lot of questions coming in around, <laughs> around this, and it's uh, probably a concern for uh, a lot of folks. Um, and so just to note, that um, you know there there are methods like this to back up your data either by running reports or um, and and pulling those and getting the insights ahead of time, um, or by starting to do uh, more of a data lake or starting to kind of pull data through BigQuery into your systems that are already there, um, uh, the way Marty described. Um, and the the trick with you know uh, with all of these there, there's some there's some downside to each. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and sometimes I think even uh, a little bit of both is is viable because uh, to Marty, to your point, um, you know, technically speaking, you can connect BigQuery to Universal Analytics uh, and dump all that data into BigQuery, but then Google charges you to hold on to that data, and also it's in a raw format. So then you're going to have to invest in. Um, you can't just go and pull. The questions the way you could in Universal Analytics or in Data Studio, uh, which is now called Looker Studio. Um, everything that comes out of BigQuery is raw data and has to be um, formatted before it goes into that report. And so you need kind of a, a data engineer on your team um, or to work with a, a vendor that can provide some of that engineering assistance uh, in order to get get anything out of that data. Um, so so it is a, a pretty substantial, substantial change there. Um, I wanted to ask though, because uh, Justin, you brought up another great point, which is that we're starting to have more of these conversations uh, internally of um, what what does your team need to know and when does it need to know it and how does it need to know it to make full use of that data? Maybe it's an email report that goes out once a month, or maybe it's a dashboard that comes up in a meeting and everyone sits around and, and does the analysis together. Um, Marty, I, I wanted to ask you, because I know um, ULI has taken some interesting approaches with um, uh, with these kind of internal conversations and uh, collaborative efforts around data. Um, what's the best What's the best way we get uh, data into people's hands? Well, uh, more just, can you tell us a little bit about the conversations uh, that yeah. are happening organizationally around, you know, how how people are sharing data, how um, how collaboration can happen? Sure. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations with one team in particular that uh, has really been using um, Google Analytics to an advanced degree on the, their property, um, making sure that we have lots of conversations about how they've been using the report monthly, what they, um, what's they, what been actually been used, what hasn't been used, um, and trying to rebuild all of the custom dimensions from scratch um, has been pretty much where we've been going. Uh, it's sort of like we, over the years, we just kept adding on, adding on, adding on. And this has been a great opportunity um, for everyone to take a, a look at what we've done and really consolidate and trim um, things that weren't being used uh, previously. Uh, so that's been the great, uh, Part about this and the meanings of talking through uh, the data we've been collecting is you asked for this, but uh, how how much has it really been used in your um, your daily work or your your reporting? And uh, it's given an opportunity to to say, well, we didn't really need to be collecting that. It was a great idea, but let's let's um, stick with what has been working for you guys. And. and uh... Justin, do you have uh, any more to add about how these dis uh, discussions have been going internally within your organization for um, uh, around data strategy and around uh, collaborative usage of the data? Yeah, we've had um, one group in particular, mainly the the group that's responsible for fundraising, that has been much more hands on in in these uh, discussions and and through this process because you know the data to them obviously is. The holy grail in terms of just turning strategy and budget and um you know capacity everything uh is determined by how many people are accessing the digital products we're creating and and then and then donating or uh becoming supporters so 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 there's one team that's very very involved and in, and um is thinking about 
all the different ways that the existing data that they've got or, or the existing code snippets that they've got injected into our pages via Google Tag Manager. They're, you know, they're thinking about how Google Tag Manager relates to the, the GA4 transition. Um, and then we've got other stakeholders who are much more um, less concerned about how the data is going to get to them, where it lives, you know, what it's what the terminology is, and much more interested in um, how they can provide data to their teams um, on their own without having to come to uh, the the digital comms team to pull reports for them in an ad hoc basis. Um, you know, we're excited. They're excited to. I've I've talked to people who I've never talked to before about data, you know, they're much more on the programmatic side and, and they're not technologists in any way. Um, and after this process, we've had conversations about how excited they are to um, be able to go in and set up their own dashboards and, and learn how to set up custom tracking events. Um, so, so that side is much more like, show me what the project product is, tell me how to use it um, and, and let me go, which is great. Um, and then the other side is much more like, nuts and bolts, let's figure out how this is working so that everything that we have been doing uh, will continue to work once that switch happens. I think that's the big concern for, for those folks are, you know, the the GTM, GA4 component and, and making sure that everything continues the way that they expect it to. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's such a huge um, part of this, of this, you know, migration, <laughs> put that in, in air quotes, because uh, it's it's again so much more than just moving to a new version of Google Analytics. Uh, it's really about you know restructuring your teams, rethinking uh, how your teams access the data and look at the data. Um, and and I, I think we're even starting to get some questions in chat about you know we want to hire somebody to uh, to help us with this this move to GA four and who do we hire? And again, you know the the trick is that uh, there's not it's going to be hard to find somebody who has years of experience on GA4 because it's brand new. Um, maybe you get lucky and you do find someone who's been using it since 2020, but uh, guess what? They have probably gone through 10 different versions of GA4 because it changes over and over again. Um, Marty, I know you, you, you've told me, um, uh, I, I don't know, a considerable amount of your time uh, during the week it just goes to um, looking into those changes and communicating those changes uh, to your organization. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you how you're um, teaching Google Analytics for uh, at ULI? Uh, the teaching right now is basically we're meeting in meetings. We're still uh, just like Justin getting ready to roll out the training and, and figure out how to do this. But it is definitely more time than I expected uh, double checking uh, that what I'm saying in a meeting is actually true. Um, that uh, what I heard last week may not actually be true when I share it in a meeting. Um, I think I had been operating under the assumption for a long time that I had a whole year of UA data, and now it's looking like I will have less than that. And that I um, heard that uh, many other things that had just changed on me. Um, so it's been in those meetings and just trying to constantly repeat that um, we're not making an upgrade. We're not making a uh, um, migration. We're pretty much starting analytics tracking all over. And that this is a new install and a new, new starting point for everything. And that your reports are going to be different. And we're still in the process of trying to figure out how one old report will continue on into a new report. Um, it's it's going to definitely be a process and just trying to constantly beat that drum of like, this is different. It's changing on us all the time um, and no one really knows the answers um, right now, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and that uh, kind of leads into my uh, next and probably final question given uh, where we are on the clock. Um, but how how are you preparing and budgeting um, and finding the additional resources and staffing that you need uh, to utilize Google Analytics for? Uh, Marty, do you want to feel like you're sure. kind of in the middle of that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're in the middle of the process. We've um, actually engaged with uh, Parsons to do a little bit of a digital strategy and uh, digital con um, um, cataloging for us um, as we are in the middle of the 
transition, we are also reaching out to them to take a look at all of our data and help us come up with a strategy and how to, to mix that together. We had uh, fortunately hired a new analytics position um, right before, before, right as this transition was happening. Um, they weren't specifically hired for this, but it was nice to have a, a new voice in the room. Um, and then as far as the um, transition, we've sort of baked in with some of the work that uh, we wanted the, our uh, developers to help us rebuild reports um, that were in Looker Studio or or um, in Google Analytics and help us rebuild them with the new GA4 um, data structure, knowing that um, if we wanted to keep anything alive, we would have to spend the time now to rebuild it. Um, that hasn't been true for all our reports. Some um, we're waiting to see the usage and also you know, it'll be the next phase, but it's definitely been uh, quite a bit of budget thrown into that work. I would say it's a majority of where the money is being spent. The transition has felt easy. It's always felt uh, shockingly easy to, to do the transition. I think the concern about what happens when this turns on and uh, what happens in my old data is really where my anxiety has been rising. Uh, the transition has been sort of like, oh, that just happened. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Justin, I wanted to uh, share, uh, have, let you have a chance to answer that question as well. I'm, I'm curious how Share Strength is, is uh, looking at uh, budgeting and additional resources and staffing around uh, GA4. Oh, and I think you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I, I think from a budgeting standpoint, I think we're we're kind of wait and see. You know, I, I, the timing for rolling out the new environment will be right around in the next month or two when we're planning for our budgeting for next year. So, um, I think that if there's an opportunity for continued training and and consulting, that we would certainly be interested in in looking uh at, at those opportunities um but in terms of like just preparing for this change you know at, at at a nonprofit like ours getting i'm super jealous of the analytics position that that marty has uh, on his staff you know i would love to have uh somebody come in and be dedicated to pulling this information but you know it, it can take three years to get a new fte approved you know at at a nonprofit like ours so um what ends up happening is everybody kind of has to take a little bit of the load and onto their own work plates. Um, and, and we just have to distribute around the, the amount of effort that is going to go into, uh, you know, learning, learning the new system, setting it up and then operating it as if it's, you know, just a normal part of our job. So I'm relying on, uh, I've got a bunch of different people around the organization who have taken a, a, a more sort of enthusiastic interest in this process and I'm just going to empower them to be, you know, as part of my analytics team. And so we're going to put together a group of folks who, um, throughout this process, throughout the training, uh, just meet regularly and talk about the challenges, talk about, you know, the breakthroughs they've had, um, and, and hope that that enthusiasm continues and I can continue to have a handful of folks. So it's not just me and my very small team responsible for, uh, you know, setting up reports for all these different sites and products and then pulling them. And um, I think I think the big time consumer for us is, is putting the context around a lot of this data. You know, you can have all this data, but not really know why it's happening, when it's happening. So being able to look at the dates and, and spend the time to really um, analyze that data it takes a lot of time too. So I, in terms of preparation, I think I'm just trying to assemble as much of an army as I can of people who are interested and willing. Um, and then uh, we will hold back some budget or make sure that we have some money available uh, if needed for continued consultant through consultant work throughout the transition process. Excellent. So, so a little bit, uh, just kind of summarizing there a little bit. Uh, I know, especially at ULI, um, having some new people come in and also uh, some people who are very familiar with other data at the organization start to look at the web data and incorporate it into their uh, broader reports. And then, you know, with Share Our Strength, uh, um, a lot of just uh, all, all hands on deck, right? And just like, how can we, how can we all GA4 together? Um, 
And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, some combination of that is probably going to be uh, pretty common at, at, at any org that succeeds with this GA4 migration. Um, and uh, and I, I think, you know, just uh, trying to do business as usual is probably a, a, a recipe for not necessarily disaster, but uh, uh, somebody that's going to be really, really tired uh, come July 1st, uh, trying to explain to all their stakeholders why um, metrics suddenly shifted and um, there's a bounce rate, but it's not the same. And uh, time on page is suddenly uh, 33 seconds instead of uh, five minutes. Um, and spoiler alert, it's because GA4 is actually um, paying attention now to how long people are, have a web browser in view versus just uh, minimized and, uh, and uh, running the timer out like that. Uh, so it's more accurate, but it's also going to be, you know, sudden drops in, in certain metrics um, that might uh, surprise and alarm your stakeholders if you're reporting to them and they're not prepared for, uh, for these shifts. So uh, it's great that both at uh, ULI and at Share Strength that um, they're starting to have these conversations or have been having these conversations internally uh, and letting people know what's going on. Um, and I know, you know, in the in the in the lead up to this, I think I asked you both um, what was easy, uh, and you both said surprisingly the buy-in. Everyone was just like, "Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> we're, we're going to GA4." Um, has there been any uh, any you know re regrets about that? Has there been anyone who's uh, kind of really um, you know uh, started to push for for other things or started to you know look for escape? escape hatches uh, to this process or, or in general, has that been the the overall uh, flow where um, everyone's kind of bought in and and excited for the opportunity? I mean, it's, it, I think it's easy to be bought in when you don't have a choice, you know, the, sure. with, with it dying, you know, it was a pretty easy sell that, you know, we need to invest in this. Um, I think the thing that was most important for me leading up to it was, I think every single email that I sent to the various stakeholders and the groups repeatedly banging, you know, this is not a migration or an upgrade from one version of a product, a piece of software to another. You know, it's not just, we just push a button. It, it's it's rebuilding the way that we collect data, the way that we analyze data, the way that we talk about data, um, which if it did cause stress, I think that, um, that people have been uh, the, those nerves have been calmed through the process. You know, there've been lots of conversations. So I think for us, just continuing that line of communication has been key and making sure that everybody's aware of what that change is, that some data may look different, that we may have to redefine how we define success on the web um, for our organization. Um, so I, if there's regrets, I, I don't think there's anything you can really do about it, right? I mean, we're just, is kind of where we're at. Um, you know, I one thing that's been, a little reassuring, I think, for me and, and for our team is we've looked at alternative options to GA4, like uh, Matomo has been talked about, and, and realizing that if GA4 doesn't work out or it's not suiting our needs or Google continues to change it, that there's other options out there that we can still uh, make sure that we're getting web data. So knowing that there is a, an escape hatch that we can jump out of if need be, I think is helpful. Um, but I think for the most part, everybody is... is um, cautiously optimistic that, you know, we'll land in a good place and, and, and figure it out together. Yeah, very, very similar for me. Uh, I think uh, the best would probably talk to me in a year about how everybody uh, feels about where we are right now, because it's still this amorphous thing. Um, it's the deadline hasn't hit. Uh, everyone can still look at build data uh, or old GA. Uh, but I've just been trying to, uh, while everything is changing, also to be pointing to the all the new and cool features that GA4 does really have. There are some some really cool new tools. I think there's um, smarter ways of uh, collecting the data that they've acknowledged that they made mistakes with UA or just have advantages now that they didn't with the, the way UA was built that they can more accurately track information. And uh, that's exciting to to be telling um, staff, like, this is probably a more accurate view of what's happening on our websites than what you've been reporting on for the last years. Excellent. 
Um, well, we're, we're just about 10 minutes out and I'm still seeing a lot of questions uh, come in around, you know, like, well, how do we, how do we do this? Um, and uh, and how do, what questions should we be asking as we hire new folks or uh, as we, you know, bring in new people to the team? Um, and I just want to say we can absolutely help. Um, and in particular, we have a, a decision-making toolkit. Uh, I think both Marty and Justin have used this as well early in their process, um, where uh, basically it's fully automated. You can just uh, come in, answer a couple of questions, put in uh, the, the information that you have available, uh, and our system will kind of make a recommendation for what to for what to look into. And um, yeah, as you've probably heard today and might be already thinking, uh, GA4 might not be the best fit for your organization if you don't have kind of that all hands on deck uh, option where you can pull in a lot of different people across the organization, or you don't have um, a dedicated um, data person who can take on some of this responsibility. Uh, GA4 might be really tricky for you. Um, and so, you know, highly recommend um, this, there's a QR code here. Um, hopefully, I think we're going to stick the link in uh, chat as well. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Um, so you can just click that link. Um, and uh, and take a look and see what um, what might what might come up from the recommendations. Uh, and I think there's also an option there to just book a one-on-one uh, -on -one chat um, with us if you'd like to just talk through uh, the options and kind of what we're what we're seeing and uh, uh, you know throughout the industry and and so forth. Um, but just to talk a little bit, I know um, we chatted a little bit about data strategy uh, in this conversation here. Um, and, and and how data strategy is going to change uh, as we look at just moving to another analytics platform, maybe it's CA4, maybe it's something else. Um, but it's a, an incredible opportunity to start having these kind of conversations in your organization about um, what is data strategy. Um, and this is kind of our breakdown, Parson CKO, here is how we think about it, as it's sort of a four-step process um, or a four-tier system. Um, and what we see is that most organizations are heavily focused on two and three, right? Um, we want to we want to track good data. We want to pull in good data. Um, we have the technology, and then we spend some time on reporting and analysis, where we go into the systems. Um, uh, for Justin, you know, that's a lot of like ad hoc reports where people are requesting info, and that's coming in. Uh, I know for Marty, there's a lot of uh, kind of pre-built dashboards for a number of teams where they just go and get answers to the questions that they've been asking. Uh, for years. Um, and so two and three tend to be where everyone is focused, but data strategy is so much more than that because number one, uh, you need that strategy definition. If you haven't kind of translated your mission into tactics and traceable steps and measurable outcomes, um, then how do you know if you're tracking the right data? And how do you know if the data that you're tracking uh, is a um, an accurate answer to your questions. Uh, and then likewise, on the other end of the spectrum, adoption and optimization. Um, if you're not taking those reports and turning them into actionable insights, if uh, they're just kind of going into a black hole of here's a bunch of metrics, okay, great, we have um, our traffic went up or our traffic went down, I guess that's fine. Um, if that's the the end of uh, where reporting and analysis goes, and it doesn't make uh, you know changes to your um, your outreach campaigns or changes to um, kind of broader um, outreach efforts at your organization, or even changes to uh, how you want um, your constituents to engage with your uh, your team and your material, um, then it's kind of all for naught somewhat. Um, uh, and and the better thing to do is to start uh, kind of weaving that data in, uh, making those data driven decisions, um, and so we can we can help with all of that. Um, Parson TKO has has uh, already, and are and we're still adding capacity over the next uh, several months to help uh, all kinds of organizations migrate off of Universal Analytics um, onto GA4 or onto another uh, system, and. Uh, you know, if you haven't done so already, reach out to us on LinkedIn or through our website um, or, yeah, check out that um, that link that we put in chat. And there's the QR code again, uh, because uh, we have a number of options uh, to help. And actually here um, we have all kinds of things. We have toolkits. There's that QR code again. We have uh, videos and uh, presentations, uh, several on GA4 already. Um, if you'd like to kind of have a deeper technical dive on that. 
Um, we have podcasts where we talk to different industry leaders and uh, get a lot of um, thoughts, uh, you know, from across uh, across the sector. Um, and then, of course, more events like this one, um, where we um, have wonderful guests join us and share their perspectives on uh, kind of what life, uh, what, what what these migrations, what these technical challenges and opportunities look like on a day to day basis. So. Um, I will pause there in case there's any last questions. Uh, and I also just want to say thank you so much to Marty and Justin uh, for your time and uh, your attention today and for everything uh, you shared with us.